So I wanted to share with you guys my absolute favorite gadgets or appliances that I use in the kitchen that if I'm not using them daily, at least every single week, if not multiple times a week, and if they were to break, that I would definitely replace in a heartbeat, and they just help with the ease of things in a from scratch kitchen. So one of those items is my Pyrex measuring mixing bowls, especially this big one, which is the eight cup one, so I can easily measure out. I don't have to have a bunch of measuring cups, especially for the liquids. I can just see it right and add up on the side of the bowl. I really do like that it has the handle and the pour spout. In fact, I use this one all the time. I'll even mix things up in this before transferring it to my KitchenAid mixer. So this one is a definite must. And then I also like this little guy. It's only a cup. Uh, but again, it's just really easier for me to add when it's small things with the liquid, and I really do like the pour spout. So these two sizes, the one cup and the eight cup, are a definite must have. Now, this is something that I did not add, which is just a digital scale. This isn't anything fancy. I wanna say it's like less than $12. And I will list beneath this video, we'll have listed out different links for where I got some of these if you're curious and wanna check them out or if you wanna shop from the post. But this little scale I've had for over, goodness, I think six or seven years now. I use this thing all the time. I don't know how I actually managed in the kitchen without it. Definitely for sourdough baking, especially sourdough bread, you're gonna get a lot more consistent results if you do it by weight. But I use it when I'm doing soap making, when I'm doing my different salves, um, I use it for that. And just obviously anything that you would need to weigh out. You can also, it's very helpful if you are making up large batches of things, so things like a large batch of pie crust or even cookies, and you wanna have it all be even, you can eyeball it, but it's really easy if you just weigh it and then you know that you have exactly four pie crusts of the exact same size and it's all divided evenly by weight instead of just trying to eyeball it. So this is really a must in the kitchen. Now this is an item, which is a wooden bench knife. And I really didn't start using bench knives until about three or four years ago when I really started to get into doing a lot of the wetter, more artisan sourdough type breads. And now I use it all the time. So I use this to cut my pie crust when I'm dividing it up. I use it to divide out any type of dough, especially when you're working with some of those wetter doughs like those artisan type breads, um, like the no need bread dough. You can check out that video and that recipe. I use them for this. Um, they're just really great. And I also really like to use it not only for working with, with wet doughs, especially creating the tension on the top of the loaf, but it also works really well if you are doing a bunch, like chopping up a bunch of vegetables and you need to transfer it into a pan or a pot. It works really good for that. And the other thing that it works really well for is when you have gotten done rolling out dough, so say biscuit dough or pie crust dough, no matter it seems how well you have your surface floured or oiled, you always have a little bit of dough that is stuck to your countertop. So this bad boy works so great. You just use it and you just scrape up the flour or anything that's stuck to your countertop and you just scrape it right up and then right into the garbage. So it makes cleanup a breeze, like sugar cookies, especially during the holidays if you're doing a lot of baking. And I love this one. In fact, my husband made me both the next item on my list, but as well as this wooden bench knife. I didn't really like the metal ones. I like the wood. And I found on a lot of the ones that I had that they had a weird handle. Some of them had like a cutout handle. Other ones had this weird grip. And it just was kind of hard to manipulate and it just didn't fit in the hand well. Like you had to, I don't know, it was weird, like this grip thing. And with this, I just, wherever, so whatever size shape you, or size of hand you have, most people have the same shape of hand, but whatever size your hand is, it, you can just grip it, grab it wherever you need to. You don't have to try to keep it around this weird handle. Um, we actually are going to be having these available. So if you are curious and wanna get on the wait list, we're just gonna have a really small amount of these available for sale. You can get on that wait list um, April 12th is when we're gonna have the first small batch available. So if you're on that wait list, we will email you when these are available. And as I said, it'll be a really small amount because he is making all of these by hand. Uh, we're really excited about it. And the other one, is the bowl dough scraper. So this is great because this one obviously is gonna be, you can cut so you could divide your dough even if it wasn't a bowl like this. But if it's a wet dough, you're not gonna be able to use this rounded edge to scrape out. 
So these, this is great. It's obviously smaller and you can get right into multiple size bowls and you can just really scrape out so you don't have it left to the side. It's not sticking to your fingers and you can scrape it out. That's one of the really great functions. The other one is if you watched my how to clean your cast iron, these work fabulous for scraping clean your cast iron pans much easier than doing salt scrubs or any of the other ways that I have tried to get stuck food when it does stick to my cast iron pan. These make clean up a breeze. Which leads me to one of my next favorite things in the kitchen. And yes, cast iron is definitely one of my favorite things, but that's actually not what I wanted to highlight. That is these handle covers. So this is a wool handle cover. I had actually a reader um, a blog follower who saw that I loved cast iron and that I was always using pot holders. And so she knitted a bunch of these up and sent them to me so they are wool. I absolutely love them. I have seen where they have silicone ones, but what I love about this, because of course your cast iron, one of the great things is, is that the whole pan heats up, which I love, and then it retains the heat, which is phenomenal. However, that means handles get really hot. And so I love that I have this on there so when I'm transferring it or just moving it or putting it into the oven, etc., I don't accidentally burn. Or once you've turned it off, even if this is sticking out, you've got little kids you know, running by, nobody accidentally brushes up against the handle and gets burnt. So I love these. I've had them for a number of years. Highly recommend um, finding them or getting even the silicone ones if you don't have access to wool or you don't know somebody who knits. I'll see if I can find some sources of anybody who may have these available. But as I said, I didn't actually buy this. They were a gift to me. So if you are a knitter and you have wool, these are awesome gifts to make. Up next, which I have shared this one before, but I love it so much, I felt like I had to share it again, is the Danish dough whisk. This one is fabulous for incorporating any type of dough, especially if it's a thicker batter or bread. Um, you'll get to see this in action on my chocolate sourdough bread, also making the no need artisan in five minutes a day bread recipes and videos that I have up here on YouTube. But I cannot believe how easy it is to mix up dough with one of these. It, you can't even compare it to using a spoon or really even a whisk. Fabulous, highly recommend one of these. Now this little gadget here, yes, this is technically an ice cream scooper. However, I really use it for that. What I love about using this is we bake a lot of cookies here. And so when you are using this to scoop out your cookies, one, you can, they're all really easy to get as a uniform size because this is flat. So you can just scrape your dough up and then you can scrape it clean against the edge and then you just go like that. You don't have to get your fingers on there. You don't have to scoop it and it just drops it. So it makes it a really quick process for getting uniform cookie size, especially on some of those stickier doughs. So this is just one of those things that is a must have. In fact, my old one broke and I replaced it. So that's my rule. If I replace it when it breaks, I know it's a must have in the kitchen. Now, these two items is actually a metal biscuit dough cutter. Now, I know a lot of people will use an upside down cup or something like that when they're cutting out their biscuits, but if it is not a sharp metal edge, you are pinching your biscuits closed and that means they can't rise up and be those tall flaky layers. We want those mile high flaky biscuits. So don't be a biscuit pincher and using like an upside down cup because that will pinch it closed and not allow it to get that height and therefore not as flaky. So this one, and it's the metal edge we're after that's actually cutting the dough. I am very much aware that it is a plastic handle. I've had people comment on that before, but it, the plastic handle is not actually cutting the dough, so it's fine. This is one that's just new that you can purchase. This one, however, is an antique one that my mom gave me. And what I love about this one is it has the center in there. So if you're making homemade donuts, which we do that here as well. But what's great about this, if you can find some of these older ones, is you just remove this part. So that just comes right off. And now it's also your biscuit cutter. So you can have your, your donut cutter and your biscuit cutter in one. And I just happen to love old antique items, but she didn't give me this until I already had this one in my kitchen. So now I just have both. Now up next, this is more of an organizational favorite um, than it is something. So it is getting used all the time in the kitchen. But it's not something I actually pull out and use, but I love this organizer. I have two of these. 
and I just like because it keeps all of my baking pans at really easy reach because prior to that, I just had them all nested inside of each other, but whenever I wanted the one on the bottom, then you have to pull everything out and it just didn't end, and then like with the lid that goes to this one, it just felt like it was all over and always falling around and just making a mess inside the cupboards. So I love this, it is sturdy and heavy enough that it completely holds all of my you know larger pans i've got my 9 by 13s in here some of the lids as well as some of the smaller um i used to have this for brownies i use my cast iron pan now to make all my brownies in but i do still have an 8 by 8 pan if i need it for some some reason or another but highly recommend these i also have one in another cupboard that has all of my baking sheets in it including my big pampered chef ceramic pizza stone so it will even hold a lot of those larger bulkier and heavier items but it works fabulous Okay, now this is a little bit more appliancey, and it might surprise you. I know in a homestead kitchen, there seems to be controversy over an Instapot, but I'm just gonna set the record straight and tell you I love my Instapot. Um, I am, if something ever happens to this one, I'm definitely going to go for the larger one and get an eight quart. This is the smaller one, but I've had this thing for three years and I use it all the time. I feel like anything that helps me get a home cooked meal from scratch on the table with ease and fast is definitely worth it. So this I use because you can cook a frozen whole chicken because I don't always remember to take things out in time to have them thawed, but I can have it done from frozen state in an hour. I kind of love that. I like to do my bone broth in here, which I've got tutorials on those that you can go and check. I love to do the bone broth because it's ready to go. I've got all of the collagen and gelatin pulled out of the bones with one hour cook time, instead of having to let it simmer and tie up my slow cooker or my stove top for 24 to 48 hours. So I love this thing. I actually got rid of my rice cooker. I got rid of my slow cooker because this has a slow cooker function. I got rid of my steamer. So it actually replaced like three appliances in my kitchen. If you can't tell, I really, really love my Instapot. Now up next, this is my Blendtec blender. And this actually, oh my goodness, Blendtec, full disclosure, Blendtec sent me this blender, I think like eight years ago um, to try, and I love this thing. It was a refurbished one, um, and it is, I think actually if you plug it in, I think it tells you how many times I've used it. Let me see here. I've used this 1,158 times. <laughs> so it gets quite a bit of use. And what's really funny is if you only use it for like a few seconds, it doesn't actually record it. So I've used it more than that. But what I love about this is it is very high powered. So using it for making smoothies and that type of thing, which not necessarily every day, but we make smoothies pretty often here in my family. Why I really love this thing is when I am making my tomato sauce and canning it in the summertime, so I can take after my tomatoes have been peeled, because when you're canning tomato sauce, you do need to remove the peels to lessen the bacteria load. But I can just dump all of the tomatoes in here after they've been peeled and hit puree and then just dump them in the pot to simmer and reduce down. So I feel like, and when I'm making jam, like strawberry jam or doing fruit purees for like fruit leather, I use it a lot actually in my home food preservation. So if anything happened to this, I would replace it in a heartbeat. Now up next, I actually did replace this. I had this for the previous version, same brand, it was black. You might have seen it in my Homestead Christmas gift giving guide. I had it for three years and it finally bit the dust. But this baby gets used every single day. It's a frother, so it works great for putting froth on top of coffee or whatever you'd want. The kids like to use it when they're making hot chocolate because it really um, gets everything well blended and then adds a little bit of foam on top of their hot chocolate. So the kids use it. And I'll even use it if I just kind of need to incorporate something um, and just get it stirred in really well. Kind of like a mini immersion blender. It doesn't actually blend though, but if you've got like different powders or you're just trying to mix something really well. So this thing gets used by pretty much everyone in the family at least a couple of times a day. So I really, really like this one. And then last but not least, we don't have a dishwasher. We are the dishwashers in our family and we all take turns so it doesn't fall on anybody's one shoulder. But this drying rack, I wanted a big drying rack and I wanted a wooden one and I wanted one that was large enough that I could put a whole bunch of things on it and it was sturdy enough that it would be able to hold all of them. So we got this, oh goodness, I think I've had this for about six months 
and I searched high and low and actually found it through Layman's. So I will have a link to that if you wanna check this out. I really, really like it. It's worked very well. In fact, I kind of thought when we first got it, like I would get it and once the dishes were all the way dry, that I would then just, you know, fold it up and put it beneath the cupboard. But no, it ends up sitting on the cupboard or on the countertop all the time because I kind of always have dishes coming in and off of it because it is a from scratch cooking kitchen. We're cooking all the time, which means there's always dishes that need to be washed and then dried. So it pretty much just lives on the countertop. But I feel like it looks pretty enough and sturdy enough and it's not plastic that I really don't mind that it's sitting on my countertop. So if you wanna check out that no need bread recipe or the sourdough chocolate bread recipe that highlights both the Danish dough whisk um, and also using these uh, wooden bench knives and the bowl scrapers, you can go ahead and check them out and you can get on that wait list if you would like to see about getting your own wooden bench knife and wooden bowl scraper, aka cast iron cleaner.